So nobody knew what I had. All I knew was I had multiple organ failure and my body was shutting down. And this one particular doctor stayed with me and he had to restart my heart three times in the middle of the night. And so, yeah, no, it, was, it looked like I was on my deathbed. Was it about, what, 10 years ago? You had something that happened that your heart stopped three yeah, different yeah. times? Well, you're doing your research. <laughs> uh, I went to, 10 years ago, I went to Sierra Leone with Isaiah Washington on a documentary uh, film shoot. And on that shoot, uh, that shoot literally would change my life. Uh, not only did I get exposed to Sierra Leone and um, the conditions over there, because they had just undergone a civil war, and Isaiah was looking up his roots, and I was part of the documentary team. I had a great experience. But when I came back, I had a near-death experience because I had caught the virus over there called the Hantavirus. And when I got back to uh, L.A., um, I mean, I was just I was just fatally ill, and I had to be rushed to the hospital. I was in the ICU, and uh, my heart stopped beating three times. I had uh, multiple organ failure, and I was in really bad shape. And the doctors didn't think I was going to make it. Nobody thought I was going to make it. So my mother at that time flew up here, and uh, people were just praying. I mean, I was just in critical condition, and uh, but miraculously, I made it through. Yeah, I made it through. Did they know what it was? At they didn't at the time. They didn't. And uh, it was a good thing that I was at what they called, uh, I was at Daniel Freeman Memorial Hospital. And they were like, oh, thank God you didn't go to like Cedar Sinai. Because the Daniel Freeman Hospital, they could bring in other technicians from everywhere. Like they could bring in people from UCLA. They could bring in doctors from USC to, uh, to help on my case. Right. Whereas I've been to Cedars, they have like clear rules about Cedars side and doctors working there and you can't bring others in. But because I was at Daniel Freeman Hospital, they were able to bring in other doctors. So nobody knew what I had. All I knew was I had multiple organ failure and my body was shutting down. And this one particular doctor stayed with me and he had to restart my heart three times in the middle of the night. And so, yeah, no, it, was, it looked like I was on my deathbed. It looked like I was on my deathbed. And actually, I thought I was on my deathbed, too. The only thing kept me going was the fact that, because at one point, at one point I remember myself making um, sort of this uh, resolve that like, you know what, I'm gonna, if I'm gonna die, my last moments were in Africa, my last moments were playing with children, my last moments were with like, you know, um, having fun and, and sharing of my gifts with everybody, because that's, that's what I was doing in Africa, we were giving out soccer balls and I had made some serious, some nice relationships over there. So I said, you know what, if I gotta go, then so be it. I had made I had made peace with it, you know, and uh, but it was another plan for me. It was another plan. I'm here. And how long were you in the hospital? I was there for about. Uh, I was probably there for about seven to eight weeks total, but for for like three weeks I was sedated, and I was under heavy sedation as the doctors treated me and put me on dialysis and we just you know trying everything to fix me, trying everything to make me better, but nothing worked and they didn't know. So they said they just had to let it run its course and just let me be, uh, you know, just let me be and sort of get, let my body fight it. And uh, so, yeah. So then when you returned home, did you have any kind of like awakening where like, okay, now, because I've been to this point where most people haven't oh. been to there or they, they end up oh, going. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh Things yeah. Things are gonna be different now. Oh yeah, 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 much. So that what happened was when I got back and I had gotten well, I shocked everybody because I told my mother I wanted to go back to Africa. And she was like, oh no, you can't go back to Africa. Oh no, you're not gonna do that to me again. My mother was beside herself. My father, uh, everybody tripped out. I mean, they were like, no, you can't go back. Because I got an opportunity to go back with, um, was it Regina King? Yeah, Regina King, the actress had invited me to go back and work with her on her documentary. And so they were like, no, you can't go back, you can't go back, especially going back to Sierra Leone, the same place. And so people were freaking out, like freaking out. And, uh, but I was resolved. I was like, you know what, I'm better. I can do this. And I wanted to do this. I wanted to be, I, there was some things that had happened to me by being sick, you know, like I was having revelations around my life and what I wanted to do with my life and, and how I wanted to show up. And so, yeah, and going back to Africa was part of it. So even in your, like, what, I mean, when you were conscious but laying in, a, in this bed or whatever, you knew, like... Yeah, yeah. If I got better, I, w I knew I wanted to go back. And, and I did go back. And, um, and not only did I go back, I started a foundation, a Vanaza Foundation. Not only did I go back, I had a soccer tournament we would do every year. And we would put kids through uh, um, school. We had foundation for that. 
I mean, I was like, we was working to get the kids out of the diamond mines. I was very active. Still am. Mm -hmm. And did you finish that documentary about the diamond mines? I did, mines? yeah, and the document, and then, <laughs> then I shot a documentary on it, me going back. And so the documentary captures me going back, hosting the soccer tournament, giving the kids uh, uh, money for school, and giving a look at what the kids were doing in the diamond mines. Yeah. And these are minors that and are these are young working. minors, like seven years old, 14, Muhammad and Musa. Yeah, I mean, they're older now, but yeah. Yeah, and so that was a really powerful thing for me. And that's actually started the ball rolling with my film career again. Because once I did that documentary, I was just hungry and wanted to do a feature, right? So then what I did was uh, I wrote a feature based on my experience or rebirth experience about going to Africa and this trauma that I was experiencing. So it was sort of a true to life story, although I substituted myself for a football player. I made it a little bit more commercial. And we spent, I spent a lot of years trying to get that going. And I couldn't get it going. And then after a number of years, I just thought, you know, I got I to gotta work on it. Because I couldn't raise the financing. So I said, let me work on a project that I can do that's doable. Something that um, is uh, it's not going to cost a lot of money. And I just happened to be with Oakland at the time. And then my sister was talking about uh, how she wouldn't let her young daughter ride the bus. I said, why don't you let your daughter ride the bus? And why are you driving around everywhere? Because that wasn't my experience growing up. And she said, well, there are gorilla pimps up here. And just recently, there was a gorilla pimp that snatched a girl off the bus and put her into prostitution. I was like, whoa, really? And so that stuck with me. That stuck with me. And in the midst of that, I'm looking for my next subject matter in terms of my film. Uh, then I came back up to oh, uh, came back up to L.A. and on the newscast that exact same week, it was talking about a young girl who was prostituting herself on Long Beach Boulevard, and I was like, oh wow! So I just couldn't ignore those two sort of circumstances or those two instances of prostitution and trafficking that came up. And at the time, I didn't even know it was called trafficking. I was just like prostitution, prostitution. It wasn't until I would read it later that I would say, oh, they're the one and the same prostitution trafficking these girls don't want to do it some of them are being manipulated coerced you know or and that's how and then I just started to research it heavily and then um, started to think about what a film could look like I'm yeah. just curious did people notice that you had changed in that you had gone through where you you faced death and then when they saw you again after maybe a year later, they noticed your personality was different or uh, in that you had a new sort of purpose or um, I think the light had turned on more. I'm not gonna say it was completely different. I mean, I was like, I was already like a very positive, optimistic person wanting to do things, but I was probably stopping myself like the, the tournament in Africa and working with the kids. I never thought I could do that. You know, like I, there was something about the way I was living life that I felt like um, that was larger than what I could do. Right, and so I started to, t so yes, to answer your question, once I got better, I started to test the boundaries more, like around greatness and largeness and saying that I can do it, I can do that, why not? Right, and so, yeah, in that way. And then having to experience death also, I mean, it just gives you this sense of, I'm not saying immortality, but you, to experience and be that close to death and to know that it can be snapped away from you at, the, at an instant, it, it kind of sharpened my focus about living life in the present, moment to moment, and doing as much as I can in that moment. And that was yeah. in 2009? Yeah. So do you notice that a trajectory of what you've done mm -hmm. since, you, like if you saw like a timeline of yeah, Jesus' life? Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, from the documentary to the, the, the trafficking movie, the one that's skin in the game we're going to talk about shortly. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, but along that, we just have to realize that it just takes a lot to make it in film. I mean, it's not like, and they're talking overnight successes, 18 years. You know, somebody says, oh, yeah, you made it, man. You're, you're over, and it's been working at it for 12 years, 13 years. You know, some cases, 20 years. Um, you know, you never see a young Morgan Freeman on the screen. I mean, like, can you imagine a young, what would a young Morgan Freeman look like? You know, you've seen him in his 40s, you know, you see him in, when he did Glory and all that. And he's already older. It's like, he's like in his 40s. But what does a younger one look like? You know, the electric company, <laughs> you know. But so, I, so I, I say that to say that, you know, it was happening for me, but nothing happens overnight. And so it was just a lot of hard work and, um, and a lot of dedication, a lot of time. 
Did you think before that it, it was possible to be this over? Like when you were leaving Tish, did you think, you know what, I, it, you know, I because I, I think people don't realize sometimes how, how long it yeah. takes to get something. To yeah, do. I no. I mean, if you had told me when I graduated that it was going to take uh, 15 years to do a feature, I'd have been like, no. I'd be like, you're kidding. You know, you're out of your mind. I would have been more like that, right? And so, no, I mean, I thought it was going to happen right away. And then I got, uh, you know, I got hit in the face with reality, filmmaking, what it really takes. And, um, and not only that, but sometimes it just takes a lot of luck. It takes a lot of being in the right place at the right time. So, and sometimes it just takes what it takes. Sometimes it just, it, it took me, like if I had to say, would I want to do any of it over? No. Because, you know, if I had made it right out of film school, I probably wouldn't have gone to Sierra Leone, right? I wouldn't have been gone. I wouldn't have been a sound man, so I wouldn't have gone over there with Isaiah Washington. I uh, I wouldn't have um, started a foundation, so my life probably would have been on another trajectory. So I don't have any regrets. It happened the way it happened. I embrace that. Yeah, and and um, to answer your question about just being stronger, yeah. So the experience made me stronger, and it challenged me to be better. Mm-hmm.